In today's video, we're gonna figure out which arcade software is the best. Is it Retrobat or is it Batacera? Welcome to the Underground Arcade. If you are new here, welcome. It's nice to have you tuning in on the channel. My name is Bronson and I'm on a quest. I'm on a mission to build an arcade in this big shit I'm sitting in on my property with machines like these ones. And we're just sort of getting started here on the channel, but we have been playing a lot over the last few months with Retrobat and now Batacera on some of these arcade machines that I've kind of restored myself. These are running Raspberry Pis on sort of more modern setups and I've been playing around with the software. And I thought we should do a video sort of comparing the two, Retrobat and Batacera, and try and figure out which is the best one for you. Now, if you'd like to see more of these arcades or know how to install those softwares, uh, I've got other videos on the channel, so I'll link them all down the bottom, but go and have a look on the channel. Subscribe if you like while you're there. Um, what we'll do is we'll basically go through a whole bunch of different categories of those two softwares and we'll just compare, and then we'll try and come up with a conclusion and figure out which one is best. Now, installation would be the best place to start. How do we actually get these pieces of software running? Are they difficult to get up and running? Um, so they are very different. Uh, Retrobat, typically used on an old Windows box. You download the Retrobat installer, you run the installer, and what it basically does is just extract all the files it needs into your folder system on your existing Windows PC. Batacera, on the other hand, is a Linux operating system with the emulation software in it. So you need to flash it onto an SD card like you would setting up Raspberry Pi or RetroPie, those sort of softwares. Um, so completely different. Now the flashing of an operating system onto an SD card to then plug into another computer like a, a Raspberry Pi sounds daunting uh, for Batacera. It's not too difficult. Um, there is a little tool you can use, the Raspberry Pi imager. You download the file, you flash it on, and you basically then plug that in. Um, the benefit of that Batacera all-in-one operating system arcade software is that it's quite lightweight. So if you've got an old Raspberry Pi, like even a Raspberry Pi 1 or 2, uh, Orange Pi as well, you can run it on that really easily um, and you know, it just doesn't need the same sort of underlying specs I suppose that Windows consumes. On the other hand, if you're not tech savvy and you don't want to muck around flashing SD cards with, <laughs> with images, then Retrobat is a really easy way to go. Uh, there are a few like prereqs that Retrobat needs like the, um, the Microsoft C++ distribution and .NET and a few things like that, but the install actually goes out and gets all the software it needs. So it's basically just like a next, 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 next install sort of installer. So both are pretty easy to install, but if you are not so tech savvy or you can't really be bothered, Retrobat's better for you probably. Uh, if you've got an old PC or a Raspberry Pi or something that you want a nice lightweight piece of software running on, then Batacera is the choice there. While we're on the subject of hardware and installation, let's talk about performance. So because we're not running Windows, Batacera is more lightweight and it's more portable. So if you go to the Batacera website, there is a massive list on there of all the handheld devices it's supported on. Devices like the Steam Deck, for example. You can put Batacera on your Steam Deck, run a whole lot of old arcade games on your Steam Deck. Um, you do need a bit more for Retrobat, so you'd obviously have to run a Windows operating system on a handheld device for Retrobat if you want to do that. I'm not sure if that's possible. But because it relies on Windows, uh, Retrobat relies on Windows, you do need a little bit more juice. I've got an old NUC box, uh, runs an old i5 processor with about four gig of RAM, and it runs Retrobat pretty good. Um, my Raspberry Pi in this cabinet here has about half the specs. It's only got a couple of gig of RAM, and that runs Batacera, and I think it does a better job of running it. This Batacera seems a lot more sleek, uh, a lot more slick when it's running uh, than obviously Windows. The Windows, you know, being Windows, it can be nice for things like connecting to the network, you know, other things. Maybe you want to do other things with your Windows computer, right? Maybe it's a media center as well. In that case, Retrobat is great for that. So what about the interface out of the box? You know, you install Retrobat or Batacera, how different are the interfaces? They're actually not that different at all. Um, they both run Emulation Station, which is all the different emulators you need. And because of that, the menus are pretty similar. Um, you kind of, as you add ROMs, the emulators uh, that you see on screen, you know, when you're scrolling through the menus, you'll see more and more appear as you add ROMs for those. So they both start out small and grow. They both have quite neat artwork. They have bezels around games when you're playing. Uh, they play music while you're scrolling through your games. They're very, very similar. I think maybe Batacera for me takes the edge just slightly. I like the menus of it and some of the uh, advanced menu 
views you've got. Um, so by default, you just see sort of a tile of all your games, kind of like Netflix. And you can change to things like detailed view, um, a whole bunch of different view options to sort of customize how your games look as you're scrolling through them. Batacera has a few more options and some of them look quite neat. Some of them look more like a PlayStation 5 or like, you know, the PSP, the old PSP menu. Um, so yeah, maybe a slight advantage to Batacera on this one, but they're pretty similar. They're pretty good out of the box actually. So what about games? Is there any difference in the games we can run on either piece of software? The answer is not really with one exception and that is Steam. So in Retrobat, running on Windows, you can actually hook it into your Steam and you can see your Steam games within the Retrobat interface. Uh, I haven't seen a way of doing that in Batacera um, because I think Retrobat actually taps into Steam being installed on that Windows box. That is the only difference really. Other than that, because they both use Emulation Station, you know, all the different emulators are available and therefore all the different ROMs are available. So not a huge amount of difference in what games you can actually play on them. So we'll call this last category other um, because there are a few things you'll see as you as you sort of dive into forums and start reading Reddit posts about Retrobat or Batacera, you'll see some things and you'll see some people say that Retrobat is slightly limited in the customization you can do. If you want a really fully customizable piece of software, then Batacera wins there. Uh, in saying that, like I haven't found anything in Retrobat that I can't do that I wish I could do but I suppose I'm only scratching the surface in terms of like the rabbit hole that is arcade cabinets. Um, there are lots of advanced features in Batacera that some people prefer that make the arcade and the games play and sort of feel more, I guess, real or genuine, um, you know, closer to how they would have played on the original cabinet back in the 80s. Uh, if that's not a concern for you, then Retrobat's probably fine. But if you do want that little bit of extra wiggle room in terms of configuration, then go for Batacera. I suppose the other thing we need to mention is that because Batacera runs on Linux, uh, you may want to consider, are you okay with learning some things on Linux, uh, obviously being command line based, or do you prefer to just stick with Windows, especially if you're used to Windows? Things like, I guess, you know, configuring the network, connecting it to Wi-Fi, configuring sound. I had some problems with the sound drivers on this and I did have to do a bit of Googling and learn some of the command prompts to fix my sound driver. That said, Linux is fun to learn, like it's fun to learn a new thing, so um, it shouldn't scare you away. But some people do just prefer the Windows element because you know Windows, right? You know how to do shared folders and you can actually use a internet browser and download ROMs directly on the Windows PC to run a Retrobat. Whereas if you're using Batacera, I actually take the card out of this cabinet, I plug it into a Windows computer, I download ROMs onto it, and then I copy them back across. So there can be a few more steps. They're not super tricky, but some people might prefer Windows and then might prefer Retrobat. So I did say at the start of the video, I'll tell you which one is better. Is it Retrobat or Batacera? Which one wins? I, I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> it's personal preference, I think. If you're used to Windows, if you know Windows inside out, if you've got an old Windows box, stick with Retrobat. It'll do everything you need it to do. And if it doesn't, and there's something really oddly specific you need to do, then you're probably going to have to learn how to use Linux and install Batacera. If, on the other hand, you don't have any hardware existing and you want something cheap or lightweight, or you're doing a handheld device, or maybe you want to get into the Raspberry Pi scene, you know, buy a second-hand Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, then Batacera is going to be the answer for you. You will need another computer to uh, image the operating system on, onto the card and then help with copying ROMs and stuff like that. But um, if you don't have hardware, you can pick up those Raspberry Pis and the Orange Pi is pretty cheap. Uh, I guess you could say the same thing for the, the Windows box as well. You can pick up old Windows boxes pretty cheap. You could in theory run Retrobat just on your laptop with like a, um, a PlayStation controller, you know, like a, a plug-in Logitech PlayStation controller. You could play all the old PS1 games on your laptop, you know, some old arcade games. Some people buy arcade sticks that have a USB plug on them and they just plug them straight into their computer, right? And, you know, you've got a little gaming setup, an arcade setup on an old laptop with a couple of joysticks. You don't need a big old cabinet like this in space to put it. Now, if you have any questions or queries, chuck them in the comments below this video and I'll answer you there. We can have a discussion there. If you'd like to join me on my quest to build an arcade, uh, please do so by hitting that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe, it's free to comment. All that good stuff boosts the channel, eh? Um, I've got some exciting videos coming up. I've actually got a claw machine that's going to join the arcade. It's on a truck on the way here. I do need to fix it though. Uh, I've got a couple of old broken arcade machines over there as well that uh, you haven't seen yet that I need to fix. 
Some old retro gaming. I uh, bought a bunch of old CRTs, TVs recently. I've been hoarding those for a project I'm working on. So there's heaps of fun stuff coming up on the channel. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video.